How much CO2 will mealworm, mealworm larvae release at different temperatures? By Ryland Allen, David Rojas, Manuel Martinez, and Danny Briones. Mealworms are cold-blooded, uh, a.k.a. ectothermic. The mealworm's metabolism usually speeds up at warm, warmer temperatures and tends to slow down at colder temperatures. Our purpose statement is how much CO2 will be will the mealworm's larvae release at different temperatures. CO2 production compared to warm and cold water. Compared to cold water, room temperature released more CO2 in the beginning then gradually started to release down. Compared to warm water, room temperature released a lot, a lot less CO2 than warm water. Experiment. Independent variable, the temperature of the water. Dependent variable, amount of CO2 released by the mealworm larvae. Control group, the mealworm larvae that was placed into the room temperature water. Constant, the amount of mealworms used, amount of water that the mealworm was placed in. Uh, this is our graph of the CO2 uh, released by uh, the mealworm larvae. The green bar represents warm, the blue re represents the cold, and the red is room temperature. Uh, as you can tell, the warm water released a lot more CO2 than the uh, cold and room temperature waters. And the the room temperature and cold water started off a little bit differently. And the cold water uh, kind of rose. And uh, the, the warm, the room temperature water kind of met and uh, just kind of stayed flat for the, about the whole whole time it was in there. Production of carbon dioxide. Uh, in the cold it releases a little carbon dioxide. The reason I think this is because uh, it is trying to keep the heat inside of its body so that it can stay warm and uh, not obviously uh, freeze to death. And uh, in the heat uh, we believe it releases more carbon dioxide because it is trying to release the heat from its body and stay cool and uh, K strategist or R strategist, uh, we believe that the mealworm was an R strategist because it has a small body. Their population fluctuates because of them turning into darkling beetles, and from the beginning, from when they're uh, hatched from their egg, they're pretty much independent. Life cycle. The first, the mealworm starts off in an egg. Second, it turns into a larvae. Third, it goes to a pupa. And then fourth, it becomes an adult darkling beetle and then lastly this whole process takes about one year uh... this is our food chain uh... first the mealworm larvae eats the grass then the spider eats the mealworm after that the snake eats the spider and lastly the hawk eats the snake our trophic level it is a, pr a primary consumer one four nine nine one four three seven point one grams. This is a part of our uh, food web. Uh, it's pretty much the same thing. The mealworm kind of replaces the earthworm because they eat grass and the organic debris that is put into the earth, and uh, the rest of it just uh, happens. This is our uh, trophic level pyramid. Uh, the trophic level for grass is 1499-14371 grams. For mealworms, it is 1499-1437.1 grams. Uh, for spiders, it is 1499-143.71 grams. For snakes, it is 1499-14.371 grams. And finally, for hawks, it is 1499-1.4371 grams. Our conclusion, we accept our hypothesis that if the room is hotter than room temperature, the organism will release more CO2 than at room temperature. We accept our hypothesis that if the room is colder than room, te room temperature, then it will release less CO2. Extra information. There was no mistake that occurred during the lab. 
there was possibly possibly still some CO2 left in the container after it was measured the first time, it could have minorly affected our result. Uh, these are the resources that we use for our presentation. Uh, the citations we got for some of the pictures and the information is uh, in these two citations.